Hello everybody and welcome to part two of our manual transmission rebuild series where we're going to be rebuilding a ZFS5-42 five-speed manual transmission out of this 1988 F-150 truck. So, if you've watched our last video, this is really uncomfortable. If you've watched our last video, uh, we did a really very okay job of showing how to remove it and uh, showed what the issue was and now we're going to tear it apart. So, let's get started. Oh. In order to get started, I rented these tools for free from my local auto parts store. This is a jaw puller. This is a jaw puller. I got two different sizes depending on which one I need. This is a bearing race set uh, to press in races and seals and stuff. That's a 36 millimeter axle nut socket, and that's a pilot bearing puller. Uh, these are Ziploc bags for bolts. You also obviously need something to write with. And then this is like a uh, a uh, condiment thing from a restaurant. I didn't steal this. You can buy these and uh, Oops, and uh, we're gonna fill that with transmission fluid just to act as lubrication when we're putting bearings and seals back in This is also a bearing separator and puller set that I got from Hover Freight for around $50 So let's get started Another very important thing is this uh, rebuild manual I found the PDF online and I just printed it and put it in a binder. So this is, I think, around 50 or 60 pages of uh, diagrams and pretty much everything you need in order to rebuild this. So um, I've read it about halfway through, which I probably should have read it all the way through, but whatever. I don't know what I'm doing and you can't stop me. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is go to our output flange right here and that, I believe, is going to be a 36 millimeter nut because I read it somewhere. And if this doesn't fit, then we have a problem because now I have to go back to the auto parts store. Back from the parts store, we got a different 36 millimeter socket and wow, that one looks like it fits. Finally. So we're just going to hope that this thing will impact off. Cool. Next step is to remove all 18 transmission case bolts, so we'll grab the impact gun and act like we're on a NASCAR pit crew. This is the shift control housing, this is where the shift knob comes out, now we're going to remove the bolts from it. Now we'll remove these, which is the reverse interlock, and these should just come out just like this. Next thing we got to do is remove one, two, three detent plugs, and here's a quick and dirty way of doing that. It says you need to use a jet plug remover. Well, we don't have one of those, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a small screw and a small drill bit that's a little bit smaller than the threads on here, and then what we're going to do is just drill. And you're like, well, all that debris is getting in the transmission. Yeah, it's getting in the transmission that's coming apart and being rebuilt anyway. And we'll screw the screw in there, take a hammer, and you want to be careful, these are under a little bit of pressure. It says you need to wear goggles. Next step is to get a hex key and remove the two reverse idler gear bolts. These are going to be on here pretty good, so you may need to grab a hammer. Now with a 22 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the reverse lamp. Now we'll take a look around the casing and then we'll drive out this dowel pin. There's now we'll take a mallet and we'll hit it like right here and we'll go around until we see it split at the thing. That was actually easy. I did it a little bit off camera, but pull this off. Ugh. All right. And uh, so that's a, uh, that's a manual transmission. That's scary because I don't have any idea what I'm doing. And that looks kind of complicated. 
Uh oh. We'll remove this, which is our reverse idler shaft, and then these two bearings will come out, as well as the idler gear. Next, we're going to wiggle this shift rail out of here. Next thing we're going to do is use a hex key and remove one, two, three of these, uh, these selector hold down bolts. Now this is where it calls for a special tool that's supposed to hold the shift um, selector forks and the entire assembly. It's a big plastic piece but it's expensive and very difficult to find because these transmissions kind of uh, were not being produced since the 90s I believe. So I've seen some guys on the forums just take a regular old ratchet strap. This is the part where it gets really scary because you're like, oh no, all of this stuff just came out of here and I don't know if I can get it back together. So that's, uh, that's the point I'm at right now. Here's our main shaft and there's our main shaft bearing. There's one of the bearings on it. So what we have done is we've taken the Harbor Freight puller set, put it together on the halves, Right now we're cranking it down and so far it seems to be working. After removing this snap ring, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this synchro and then we're going to remove this, um, our shift ring, I guess is what it's called. And uh, what you want to be careful of when you remove these, there's going to be springs on this transmission. This is what it's composed of. It's composed of this little square piece, this little um, ball, and this spring. And there's um, three setups like this, and they'll go flying. I've already lost one of the little balls. I'm going to have to go searching for that. Um, let's hope that somebody sells them. Uh, if not, then we have a problem. So, the manual, the rebuild manual calls for a collet puller that's supposed to go around just this. There's a quick way around that. And get a three jaw puller, just like this. Hook the jaws around the gear, right around here on the gear, and you want to make sure these are engaged and they're good so that you don't somehow screw up the gear itself. You can feel it start to give. We got to pull the snap ring off of here first. That was a chore because I have crappy snap ring pliers. Then this comes off. We'll set that down. And then this is our uh, gear here. This rides on bearings. Uh, we have another synchronizer. We're going to look at how this is lined up. It's good to take pictures. Um, in fact, I'm actually taking a video of the entire disassembly process so I can watch it when I fail at putting this back together. Slide this gear off. And then there's going to be this bearing here. We have one of these in our rebuild kit, but we'll just go ahead and put it back in the gear and set it aside just so that um, we can relatively easily keep track of some of this stuff. Again, we're able to utilize our puller by putting it very closely between the teeth of this gear. Uh, you want to be very careful when you're doing that that you don't put a whole lot of force on it because obviously you don't want to strip the teeth. However, uh, I mean, these are made to take a little bit of abuse. We'll remove this, set this aside, pull out this little spacer, pull out this gear, and pull out the bearing. Alright, next, we'll pull up this synchronizer ring, and then 
this is the part you want to be careful because of all of these springs around here. The manual says that you can get a rag and put it around here. So that's what we're going to try. Okay, that helped. What makes these little bitty ball bearings hard is because they're obviously covered in transmission fluid, so they're already very slick. And they're very small and easy to lose. And they're spring-loaded. These snap rings are very hard, and these are also crappy uh, snap ring pliers. Might not be a bad idea to buy good snap ring pliers eventually. Many hours later. Here's one of the pullers that we uh, rented from the parts store. As you can see, we can't reach it. So we went to Northern Tool for less than $30. We got this absolutely massive puller that will make this job um, possible. <laughs> so let's uh, get this just set up on this gear here. Here's our next synchronizer body. So synchronizer ring. Here's our gear. There's our bearings for the gear. And we're done with this side. So we're just gonna switch this over because uh, this is caught right here. This is the end of the shaft. You're not gonna be able to get a puller that'll reach here anyway. Um, so we'll flip it over. <sighs> now, unfortunately, we don't really have a way to stand it up. We could get a vise, but uh, where's the fun in that? And you can just do it on the floor with a really crappy workspace. So what we've ended up doing is just bending the cage. And that's fine because we're just going to cut the cage off because we don't, it doesn't matter. We are going to be replacing this. So we'll just get our cutters. Gear comes off, I'll move some of these out of the way. You want to keep your workspace clean, that is exactly what I am not doing. But hey, it is what it is. So this this went on like that. So we're gonna set this, we're gonna set all these upside down on top of each other to kind of keep them in order. And then this is where your split bearing goes. If you opened your rebuild kit already, you're just like, wait a sec, what is the split bearing? So that's it. Doesn't look like it's directional, so we'll just go ahead and slide that in the gear. Again, to keep track of it, carefully remove our synchro ring, set it on top of there, put a rag around it, hold the other one, and then carefully pull this guy out, and you can see, or you can hear all those parts falling. And the parts you want are three of these little balls, three of these guys, and three... Three of these springs. Get the snap ring off of here. Again, get good snap ring pliers. I don't have good snap ring pliers, so. Get broken loose, so we're just gonna use the impact to get the rest of this off. Synchronize your body. Another synchronizer ring. And our last gear. And the bearings that go with that gear. And there you go, there's our bear shaft. That is, uh, that's gonna stay like that. So we're gonna put this back together with new parts. Let's move all this crap out of the way. Thank Next we're going to preheat our oven to about 320 to 330 degrees. 
To begin our reassembly, the first thing we're going to do is have our main shaft right here. And we're just going to clean it just a little bit, just using a rag to make sure that there's no uh, particles or shards of anything on here. Just make sure there's no debris or anything. Next thing, this is a synchro ring. And all of these synchro rings and all of this stuff, this these only fit one way. So if you pick up one and it looks different or it seems different and it doesn't fit on, you're doing something wrong. You have the wrong synchro ring. So, for example, you take these two. They look very similar. On this particular transmission, you can see there's no lip here, but you can see there's a lip on these. And then our next set of synchro rings, you can see there's a huge size difference. So, obviously, if you're trying to get this one to fit where this goes and this to fit where this goes, they're not going to work. So, this is our new synchro ring. Or is it? Uh oh, we screwed up. But no, because our rebuild kit doesn't have part numbers marked on the side here but this does so this is our old one and what you want to do is you want to inspect and you can see these actually our old one doesn't look too bad but we're gonna go ahead and replace it anyway what uh, does appear to have some wear I'll just set all this where it belongs real quick what does appear to have some wear is if we pull off this this is our actual synchronizer um, synchronizer ring, synchronizer hub, whatever you want to call it. These are supposed to be pointy and on this side they are but if you look here they are rounded off. A little bit of research shows that I can get these rings from a place called Midwest Transmissions. As you can see here's what they're supposed to look like. You see how these have a nice point. These are worn a little bit but if you turn it over you can see how these are almost worn flat and have no point at all. First things first, a new one of those bearings, which we have right here. We're going to get our transmission fluid. Put a little new stuff right here. Just put a little around here. That slides right on there. Take our gear, that slide, and one, I believe this is the one we need. You can see, no, that is not the one we need because there's way too much play. So the one we need is this one right here because it fits perfectly. We're going to put just a little bit of transmission fluid. Okay, there we go. Next, we'll take this, and it'll tell us in the rebuild manual which direction it goes. Position the synchronizer on the main shaft so that the side with the deeper hub faces down. So, as you can see, this has the deeper hub, and then this has the markings on it. I remember seeing the markings whenever we removed this. Unfortunately, you can't just knock this on here. I mean, you can, but you're gonna use some force. So we're just gonna go ahead and throw that in the oven for, according to the rebuild manual, no more than 15 minutes at 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, delicious, my synchro rings are ready. You can hear the sound change whenever it's bottomed out. So, that is done. Now you'll notice this gear doesn't have the lip. This, uh, excuse me, this synchro ring doesn't have the lip. Now a quick tip, whenever we have our synchronizer ring here, 
If you look inside it, and this is going to be really, really, really hard to see unless you're looking in person, follow it around. It outlines this in the manual. But if you follow it around, you'll notice, like right here, there's three spots like this, but right here the teeth are a little bit flatter. It's a very subtle difference. I'll try to get a close-up in just a sec. But they are flatter. If you run your hand through, you can feel and you can see. Now, where those springs and those detents go, that's where you want to line up the flat things so that because they hold in the, the detents. They hold in these guys with the spring and the ball. Now it's really hard to see, but you can kind of see it. But you can see that's regular. Let me get my let me get this in a better angle. But you can see right there are your three flattened areas. And there's three of those. So there's three in each part. So there's three teeth that are flat. And then about right here, there's three more. And then about right here, there's three more. Now with our, our sliding ring in, we'll take one of the springs. Well, no, sorry. First off, we'll take one of these, we'll slide it in there, we'll take the little detent ball, drop it in there, and then we'll use a small screwdriver to push it in there. And then this is where you kind of have to have three hands. We'll take our spring, And then you'll hear it click, and then there we go. This will take our heated up thrust washer. We received our new piece, which I will show you as soon as I can find it. Alright, let's take a look. This is a common issue on the reverse and fifth uh, synchro sliders on ZFS 542s. As you can see, here's the old one. It's all like rounded off uh, on this side. And then here's our brand new one we picked up from Midwest Transmission. As you can see, the teeth are nice and sharp. Two grooves facing towards the output shaft. Line that up. These, this is our split needle bearing, so what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of transmission fluid around here. Slide these on. Rotate them a little bit so that they get some transmission fluid on them. And we'll take our gear. Slide it on there.
main shaft we've already cut the bearing off of as you've seen this procedure done um, well excuse me this input shaft we've already cut the race off of this bearing as you've seen the procedure uh, earlier in this video so we'll go ahead and remove that and then what we are going to do bearing separator this is one of our rental tools one of our many rental tools No, doesn't reach. Ah, no. Further jerry rigging, well, <clears throat> excuse me, further innovation has led us to the conclusion that we may actually be able to use our AutoZone puller combined with our large claw puller. So, what we're going to do is we have the AutoZone puller hooked up. Now, we're going to hook up our jaw. This is primitive engineering at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Got it. Somehow, but we got it. according to the rebuild manual, is the only thing that needs to be done to this input shaft. There's a rubber seal here. Let's see if you guys can see that. No, you can't. There's a rubber seal right here, and there's also an inner race. But the inner race on this guy is actually built in. Um, I don't think it's serviceable. So we're not going to do anything to that because it literally, input shaft, it says remove the old bearing put a new one on and that's it so that's all we're gonna do like I said a rebuild kit does come with a seal but the seal on here actually looks good so we're not we're not gonna screw with it anymore uh, risk breaking it uh, when in reality it may not be as easy to replace as we think so uh, next thing we're gonna do that's done move that out of the way next take our other shaft let's get it and the camera a little bit better and there's a bearing on this end there's also a bearing on the other end for the counter shaft the manual only calls for replacement of the top and bottom bearings so first thing we're going to do for this bearing is cut the outer race which it looks like we will have to do just a little bit of prying to get this accessible Cut off our outer race and we'll leave all of these parts here. We'll go dump this in the trash so that these don't spill out everywhere. Take our little uh, bearing press set that you can rent from your auto parts store, take our old race, put it on here, put this on here, take a rubber mallet and beat the devil out of it. So now we'll flip it over and we'll do the same thing to the other side.
gonna prepare these case halves to go over to the machine shop. So first thing we're gonna do, we'll get a magnet on a stick and we'll pull out our detents. We're also going to clean out the inside of these. There are some metal shards. We're just gonna spray them with some brake clean because there's metal shards from whenever we drilled out the, um, the plugs. Now we'll take a look at our second case half. And right here, this magnet just slides out. And that should be the extent of disassembly required. Um, obviously, I'm going to go through it, just make sure there's no other loose parts inside that we get lost during the uh, washing process. I'm going to leave all of the old seals and old bearing races in place because I think that will just make it a little bit easier whenever I come back through to replace them. I'll know which seals are where. I'll just be able to take out the old ones and pop in the new ones. With all that being said, let's run to the machine shop real quick. Next we'll turn this guy over and I've already done it to uh, see that the tools that I had on hand were able to do it. But we'll pull out this. This is one of the bearings that our uh, shift, um, shift rails rides on. And what we will use to remove this is uh, more, part, more rentals from the auto parts store. This is a pilot bearing puller and then this is a slide hammer. Make sure that that hole is cleaned out of any debris. So we'll take this. And then that will bottom out in there. There's a little stop so it'll bottom out on the stop. Next we're taking our rental slide hammer and a puller that we rented um, from O'Reilly's that's made to go with the slide hammer and I was able to uh, kind of modify it, not modify it, but I was able to switch the jaws around so it became an outside puller because normally it pulls the bearing off, but I got it so that the things would split apart so that I could use it to pull off a, um, uh, an erase. So uh, yet another way to avoid paying 40 bucks for a tool that is only gonna be used a few times during this build. <laughs> And then there's a, there's a little lip inside there that it should press against to stop. Next we'll take our, our bigger race. We'll line it up a little bit. New race, new race, we're done with this. Now this race has a spacer on the back, so you want to keep track of the spacer. Sometimes your rebuild kits will come with different size spacers. This is for setting the clearances and the preload on the transmission. So we're going to put this spacer back in our rebuild kit. And obviously this is our old race, we don't need it, so we'll set it aside. Now with our transmission flipped over, we'll drive our main seal straight through using a hammer and a flathead screwdriver. And there's our seal. Next we'll pull out our next race. Um, there is a little shim and oil baffle in here. We are given one in the rebuild kit, thankfully. It looks like it was a little bent up, but I don't think that will be a problem. I'm going to try to um, try to just massage that and make it look a little bit better so there's not that jagged edge there. But um, as you can see, our rebuild kit does give us one. Um, unfortunately, whenever we remove this, it will be destroyed.
this spacer aside for later. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our new races and we're going to press them into the case. Now, what we're not going to do is install either of these shims and we're not going to install the oil baffle. And what we're going to do is we're going to press in the races and then we're going to measure the, um, the bearing clearances and I'll show you how to do that as soon as we get these pressed in. This is our new race and in order to press it in easier we're going to take our old race place it upside down on that and the reason we're doing that is because our largest race press from our rental kit fits perfectly. In the process of pressing in these races, our race press is made of aluminum, which if you have to hammer really hard, little shards of it come off, as you can see here. So before we start putting stuff on this thing, I'm going to take our air hose and blow it out. Now we'll ratchet strap our, uh, our two shafts together. Uh, you want to go ahead and put the input shaft on top of the main shaft and then ratchet strap the whole thing together. We're going to put a little bit of transmission fluid on our surfaces real quick. Take off our ratchet strap. I've gone ahead and put a couple of bolts on the top case right here just to hold it on and uh, flip the transmission like this. And what I've done is I've taken our old races and I've used it just so that I can space uh, space it a little bit so that I can uh, reach my hand under there. Next we'll take a magnetic dial indicator uh, holding stand that we bought from Harbor Freight and then I already have a dial board gauge so I just went ahead and took the dial indicator off of that and set it up. I went ahead and uh, mounted the transmission mount and that because this is steel the entire case is aluminum and this is magnetic so obviously it won't work since the entire case is aluminum. I uh, went ahead and mounted this and then I used uh, that in order to hold our uh, magnetic uh, dial indicator base. Next we'll get our dial indicator zeroed out on uh, our input and our output shaft here and a quick way to do that is on the Harbor Freight dial indicator uh, magnetic base there's this little twist thing here and you can use this to um, increase or decrease um, how far the dial indicator is touching so we're going to use that to slowly adjust to get this right to or as close to zero as we can. And next, this hole right here is perfect for fitting our crowbar in here. Next thing we're going to do is with our crowbar on the input shaft, we're going to make sure it is absolutely not touching it whenever we zero it out. So now we'll take our crowbar, we'll put it right on the input shaft, and then we'll push down. We'll readjust this just a little bit and we'll do that one more time. It looks like it's going to be about 50 thousandths. Now we're going to use a micrometer real quick to measure the, our uh, shims that we took out. Or uh, excuse me, our shim that we took out and our new oil baffle. So first we're going to measure our oil baffle with the micrometer. You can use a digital micrometer but I'm just using this for accuracy. So it's about 12 thousandths. As you can see, 10, 11, 12 thousandths. So our new oil baffle is about 12 thousandths. Our old shim is about 50, 49 to 50 thousandths. We're just going to go ahead and say 50 thousandths. Now to measure our counter shaft preload, we'll remove the PTO cover on this side and we'll remove the PTO cover on the other side. Our rebuild kit includes new seals for this, so we'll go ahead and take these off. Now I saw this trick on the forums. With both PTO covers off, we're going to take a magnetic ruler and we're going to stick it to this gear. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to get the magnetic dial indicator uh, right on that. Now what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken the PTO cover off and then I've moved it up and then bolted it in here and here. 
because this is uh, made out of steel, so it's magnetic, so I can stick the magnetic dial indicator to it. And as you can see, uh, I have it set up like this. There's our magnetic level, and here is our, um, here's our gauge. So now we'll make sure that that's zeroed out. So it looks like about 61 thousandths is returning to zero, as you can see. So let's just make sure, because we want to make sure we're not turning the gear. Because if the gear turns, it screws up the reading. About 61 thousandths. Now we'll go ahead and we'll take our ratchet strap and we'll get it around here real quick. Alright, so it looks like we're going to be able to reuse our counter shaft shim. So we're going to pull out our counter shaft uh, bearing race real quick. We'll take our counter shaft bearing, uh, bearing race shim, excuse me, drop it right down in there. Now we'll take our race, we'll take our race press, and to make things a little bit easier, we're going to use this uh, socket and extension in order to, um, we'll just hit on this in order to uh, press in the race. Now here's our shim kit. These are actually for a differential, however we can make them work. The transmission place I called was out of the uh, shims for this particular transmission, but said, hey, uh, we've built a bunch of these. If we use these, uh, they'll work just the same. Um, I will put that transmission company in the description and in the video on your screen right now. And then uh, we're going to take two 12 thousandths and a 17 thousandths shim. I measured all of these with the micrometer. And uh, this should give us 41 thousandths. Using the uh, shims plus our oil baffle, uh, looking on a micrometer, you can see that is about 53 thousandths, which puts us right in spec where we need to be. Now normally we would put our shims in first and then our oil baffle. However, since uh, the way that these fit, there's a little taper on the back of the oil baffle here, and our shims won't clear it. Um, I called up the transmission place and confirmed. I said, hey, you know, I'm putting these in front of the oil baffle. That's not going to be a problem. They said it's not. So, uh, obviously take out your race first. I did that off camera. We'll drop in our oil baffle. Make sure we put it in the correct orientation. Uh, so take note whenever your old one comes out. Then we'll take our shims. We're using two 12 thousandths and a 17 thousandths. Drop those in. Then we'll take our race. We can go ahead and pound that in. Now here's where it gets a little difficult. You have to put all of this back in the case at one time. If you just put these two in and try to put these in, they'll get stuck because it's all supposed to go in at once. So ratchet strap it together as best you can and then use the, uh, use the shift rail retention bracket as a guide to hold these at the right spacing and it helps to really take pictures so that you know which goes where. Um, I just watched the video footage um, that I took a while back and saw where these go. Ratchet strap them together. You want these to be relatively straight with each other because the bearings are supposed to go in the case. And then we're going to try to slide the case. We have it hanging off the table. We're going to try to slide the case on it. So here's our case, and you can see there's where these two are supposed to slot in. There's where our main shaft bearing is supposed to slot in, our counter shaft bearing, and our other shift rail. Don't worry about this one for now because we can get this one in um, after we get all these in. So we're going to slide this over here. And you're going to have to wiggle and shake this a lot. You may actually have to loosen the ratchet strap a little so that they're not super tight. And I think we actually kind of got it. So we'll take the ratchet strap off. And as you can see, here's all of our shift rails. You want to make sure that they're not caught up on anything. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our other shift rail. And we're just going to drop it in here. You're going to have to wiggle this a little bit. And there we go. So that's held in just like that.
Next thing we're going to do is our shifter, uh, our shift rail retention plate. We're going to go ahead and take the, uh, the bolts for that. Next thing we'll do is take our reverse idler shaft and drop it right here. We'll get the first bolt started for it. So doing what I just did is going to be a common mistake. You can't drop the gear on the shaft, so you have to take the shaft out first. And then what we do is we'll get the gear engaged. Drop the bearings in it. Then we'll drop the shaft in. So just uh, just t something to watch out for. Now these are our little detents. There's three of these, and this is what we took out uh, whenever we drilled those holes earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray some brake clean in these. Now in order to prepare for reassembling the case halves, we're going to put the two PTO covers on. And we look at the bolts we took out of the PTO covers, you can see there was some blue thread locker on them. So the first thing we're going to do is get our blue thread locker, put a little bit on these bolts to get them ready for putting them back in. Now we'll take our gasket and our cover. Now we'll torque the 28 foot-pounds according to the rebuild manual. Now we'll knock out the other side. All right, now we're ready to mate the case halves together. So the first thing we're going to do is grab some of this. It's called anaerobic gasket maker. This is what um, the guys on the forums say to use when making the gaskets on these. Any good parts store should have these. Now, before we put the case halves together, one thing that we do not want to forget is our little magnet, and that'll just slide in just like that. Then we'll grab our dowels. Now we'll grab a rag and try to clean up as much of this goop as we can. Now we'll use our torque wrench to torque our case bolts to 17 foot-pounds. Now we'll tighten our reverse idler shaft bolt. Click. Click. Next we'll install our detents, springs, and detent plugs. So we'll take our little detents after cleaning them off. We'll just drop them in there. We'll use the spring to push them all the way in. We'll drop the spring on top of them. On top of each one, you want to make sure these don't have debris or anything on them. You want to make sure the springs are nice and clean. Now, I believe you have to measure approximately how much you hammer these in, and unfortunately we don't really have a way to do that, so we're just going to try to eyeball it to about how much they were hammered in whenever we, um, whenever we started, uh, whenever we removed the old ones. So that's not very much. So don't go hammering these until they bottom out, you just want to put them just below, you want to put these just below. Uh, just below flush. The next thing that we can do is we can put in our reverse interlock and what that does is it keeps you from shifting from fifth to reverse accidentally because uh, that would suck and that would break things. So we'll take our small piece and put it in there and then we'll take our spring which slides over here and then that just pops in just like that and the next thing we can do 
is we'll take our shift control housing, set it right there, take the bolts for it, want to get them hand tight with a ratchet. You don't want to try to torque them otherwise you'll break them like I did. Next we'll take our output flange and since there's a sealing surface here we're going to put just a little bit of transmission fluid so that we don't um, tear the seal whenever we insert this. Line up the splines. That goes in just like that. And then it's, the rebuild manual calls for a new bolt anytime that the old bolt is removed. This calls for a torque spec of 200 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, my torque wrench will only go up to 150, so that will have to do. And, oh no, this spins. How are we going to hold it? Next, we'll take a reverse light switch and this crush washer that came out with it. Put the crush washer on the threads. And snug it down. Next thing is we'll take our shifter repair kit and our shifter repair kit includes our uh, shifter hold down plate as well as this little snap ring, two new plastic bushings, and a boot. Uh, not pictured uh, that it also includes, it includes the gasket between this and the shift control housing. So here's our old shifter and we took the rubber piece off of it, it completely disintegrated. And you take these bushings off, these bushings go on like this. And if you really want to get into this, you can actually press out this pin and there's bushings in there and that'll get rid of some of your lateral play in the shifter, but we're not going to go that far today. Uh, next thing you want to do is get this and then take our rubber piece and what we want to do is we want to get this snap ring in here and it's pretty hard to do. And then with our snap ring in there just like that, we'll take our retaining, our uh, shift retainer housing thingy, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to get plenty of water on this rubber piece. And then this piece just pushes in just like that and there you go All right, so it's been about, a, let's say, 100 miles, 140 miles, something like that. Um, I've been driving this thing around. Uh, so far, it seems good. Everything shifts good. Uh, my only complaint, uh, I'm not exactly sure the cause of this, but my only complaint is that it uh, does make a little bit of noise. But um, from what I can tell, these ZFs are not quiet transmissions. So we're going to chalk it up to that and not uh, anything related to something I would have done. Like you hear that whining through all the gears. It's done that before, it does that now, but I think that's normal. It definitely seems to shift better though. Not, it's not going to shift like a. Uh, it's not going to shift like a Corvette. It's not going to shift like a Mustang. Yet. <laughs> when we 
put a six-speed Mustang transmission in it, it will. if you want to see uh, the next uh, stages of the turbo build. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.